Good morning, everyone. Can somebody indicate that you can hear me? Okay, cool, thank you. Okay, uh, Paul will be joining the sessions shortly. So I will just have to start. By now we already have, um, just one second, I just need to make sure that you can see the diagram. So let's adjust that. Cool. Now we have a good foundation of developing a dynamic model. So uh, we'll simply continue to apply the steps that we have learned in, the, in different examples. Okay, so let's develop a model for a state tank heating system with a constant volume. Just looking at the diagram, what do you think are the control variables? What do we want to control? Yes, we definitely want to control temperature, but as for the flow rate, uh, because it's a constant holdup, we assume that the flow rate in and the flow rate out are equal. So for now, we would like to control um, the temperature. Okay. Okay, the second step normally is to draw a schematic diagram. Remember the steps that were listed in table um, 2.1? So we need to draw a schematic diagram and include all the variables. So I've already done that for you. And if you noticed um, earlier on in the diagram, I tried to draw a neat diagram um, and I indicated all the variables there. You will also get an opportunity to draw your own diagram in the tutorial tomorrow. Um, please make sure that your diagram communicates the right information. Okay, now let's move on. Assumptions. What are the assumptions that we can make? We can make well, with the diagram in view. Perfect mixing is the, the first one. Yes. Any other? I'm expecting like four of them. Yes, definitely because um, the, vo the volume is constant. Okay, um, uh, Alex, the temperature is not constant because remember there is a heating element, so the temperature will vary. Yes, inlet and outlet flow rates are constant too. Yes, thank you. The density and uh, heat capacity are constant. Definitely, heat losses are negligible. You've covered these ones well. Thank you. <laughs> No load shedding. <laughs> yes, Alex, no load shedding. Um, uh, I'm glad that you're enjoying yourself. So definitely you've mentioned perfect mixing, um, that the flow rate in and the flow rate out are equal, density and constant, uh, density is constant and heat capacity is constant and that heat um, losses are negligible. Let's move on. Are there any special variables? Yes, there, there are no special variables, um, Alex, you are right, because um, it's a CSTR. Okay, conservation laws. Remember, we're following the steps in that table. Um, what is what um, balances can we make? Is there a mass balance? It's a constant volume? No, definitely no, uh, because in is equals to out. Okay, how about an energy balance? Yes, unfortunately, I, sh I revealed the answer before you could even answer. Yes, because there's a heating element. Um, I agree with you, Manik. Um, there's definitely an energy balance. And when we recall clearly, this is how Paul derived it, okay, as the internal energy, uh, change in internal energy. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, just one second. So now you remember our control variable. Our control variable is to change, is to control the temperature. And this look, this equation doesn't look anything like temperature. So we want to write the energy balance in terms of temperature. Okay, how are we going to start? We're start going, we're going to simplify the accumulation term first. In other words, we're going to write the accumulation term in terms of temperature. And then we will um, write the change in enthalpy term also in terms of temperature. Okay, let's just get to it. Okay. However, for us to do that, we need to make um, some, um, some assumptions. Okay. Um, we want to make some assumptions. And so we can assume that for a pure liquid um, or for a pure liquid at moderate or low pressure, the internal energy is equal to the enthalpy. Okay, so you may be wondering where I'm getting all these assumptions. Um, these are detailed in Appendix B. And Appendix B is a revision of your thermodynamic principles. So please do review them. Uh, when I was preparing for this lecture, I thought to myself, oh, I don't wanna go and read Appendix B, but it will remind you of everything that you've learned in thermodynamics. Okay, now based on this assumption now, we can um, definitely write that the internal, the internal energy is equal to enthalpy and the internal energy per unit mass is equal to the enthalpy per unit mass and also that um, enthalpy depends on temperature only. So when you look at Appendix B, you realize that uh, enthalpy does not really depend on temperature only. So um, this is the assumption that we make to simplify this particular model. So please do not skip Appendix B. It's only two pages, just read through it. We also need to remember that a differential change in temperature, delta T, I don't know if you can see that properly, is equals to um, delta T produces a change in the internal energy per unit mass. Um, that's the red arrow there, that, that the DT produces uh, DU internal energy. And so then we can write that the change in internal energy is equals to the change in enthalpy which is CT dt. Okay, this is a very important equation uh, towards developing our dynamic model. Definitely, yes. Um, uh, thank you for the input, Monique. Um, let's move on. Another important information is that the total internal energy of the system can be expressed in terms of the internal energy per unit mass multiplied by the mass of the system. That is your rho V. Um, There's the equation that I'm talking about. This is the one. So from this energy, we can derive a differential change in internal energy, okay, which also leads to a change in enthalpy as shown. Okay, let's just show the change in enthalpy, how it takes place. There you go. And so, we have now written the accumulation term in terms of temperature. Let me just show you how we went about doing this. There's your accumulation term. We've written it in terms of temperature. This is a very important simplification. Otherwise, your model is just too complex and um, uh, difficult to deal with. Happiness, um, are you happy so far? Thank you very much. So we can move on then. Remember that the energy equation that we spoke about um, had an accumulation term, just to go back a little, there, there is the energy. And also um, a change in enthalpy term on the right hand side after the equal sign. We want to write that change in enthalpy term in terms of temperature as well. Okay, so that is where we are now. If you just allow me to scroll down to get back to where I was. And so we want to express this term in terms of temperature. I've mentioned that. So now for a liquid at temperature T and enthalpy H, 
this is the integral equation. I just want to show you that this is the integral equation. So what we can do, we need to integrate that uh, equation that you see on the screen. And then we can see that this is how you write it. I think here, is it Monique? Um, yes, she, she actually had written this equation for us earlier before I even got to it. So now without loss of generality, we can assume that the reference enthalpy is equals to zero. There you go. So basically this won't affect the entire proof. And so, um, and so now we can have our enthalpy term per unit mass. We can write it as C, uh, the difference in temperature and the reference temperature. Similarly, our enthalpy per unit mass for the inlet stream now, this is how we can write it, as well as the heat capacity times the difference in temperature. Okay. It's, okay, is it, it's just a straight line. Of course, yes, thank you. So now we have successfully done that and we can substitute back to that change in enthalpy term. Basically, we've written our enthalpy term in terms of temperature, which is what we wanted. So we have now the accumulation term and the change in enthalpy term in terms of temperature. We can substitute everything back to the energy equation. There. This is our desired equation. Okay, you, we can simplify it further by writing um, uh, the change in temperature with time as the uh, subject of the formula. Okay, but basically, this is our desired uh, equation. So now that we've developed the model, we need to find out the degrees of freedom that we have. And here again, I'm asking you to help me, please. I need your input. What are the parameters? Just looking at the equation there. Definitely V, volume, density, definitely. There's one missing. Yes, thank you. Uh, heat capacity. So you have your volume, you have your density, and you have your heat capacity. And then everything exactly, exactly, Alex. Everything except for temperature. Now, what are the variables? Yes, definitely temperature. Yes, inlet temperature. Yes, flow rate. Yes, yes. Okay, so let's write them in. You said temperature, you said inlet temperature, and you flow rate and Q. Okay, cool. Now the number of equations, um, how many equations do we have? One, two. The degrees of freedom, has anybody calculated them for us? Yes, it is the energy balance. Has anybody calculated? Definitely, it's three. What's the output variable? It is temperature, that's exactly what we want to control. And how about the input variables then? Very good. Inlet temperature, flow, and the rate of heat transfer to the system, Q. Now, um, for control purposes, um, we need to classify um, the input variables as disturbance variables and manipulated variables. Uh, what are the disturbance variables that we have? Yes, inlet temperature and flow. And then manipulated variables. Yes, um, the rate of heat transfer to the system. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate your uh, participation. Um, so we have successfully um, developed a model for a constant volume re uh, CSTR reactor. And now we want to see how um, a variable holdup uh, will be. Okay, so we want to compare the two. So keep also the assumptions that we made earlier and note the differences between the two examples. Okay, so in a constant, uh, in a in a changing volume CSTR, what would be our control variable? 
controlled objective, sorry. What is it that we want to achieve? Okay, the, not necessarily Q Manik, but uh, not necessarily the flow rate either. Definitely temperature because the, the, the system is being heated. There's one more missing. Okay, just uh, to make um, for the sake of time, uh, because Paul also has to come and finish up his section. So basically, our control very um, our um, sorry our um, control objectives are basically the temperature and the volume. Remember, we said the the the, the volume is changing, so we want to control that as well. How about the assumptions? What assumptions can we make? Perfect mixing, definitely. Density and uh, heat capacity constant, very true. Constant area. Um, Okay, thanks, Paul. Um, I noticed your message. Okay, so also, Manik, thank you. You say um, heat losses are negligible, definitely. So basically, um, we have perfect mixing. We have density and constant. And then we have negligible. heat losses. Okay, cool, guys. Thank you very much for your contribution. Let's move on. We would also, um, we're not going to check um, the schematic diagram that was already done for you. But are there special variations? No, yes, a refiller. It's definitely, we don't have special variations because uh, it's a CSTR. Okay. How about conservation loads? Do you, we have an, a mass balance this time? Yes, definitely we have. Monique, um, uh, special variation, Paul actually explained it much better in his uh, previous lectures. But it just means that uh, when things are not constant, say you don't have constant concentration in your system, um, and then definitely you will have uh, special variations. Um, and you have that in a, a PFR. Uh, I think in the previous session, I also listened to the session before preparing uh, for this uh, lecture. He, uh, Paul explained special variations better there. Please listen to that lecture. Okay, so. Definitely, guys, there is a mass balance. Um, and it's given by this uh, equation. Um, also, in the previous lecture, Paul mentioned that it is always better to write the volume in terms of um, area um, at times height. We can do that and end up with a, a term like this one, uh, the equation that I highlighted in yellow. But um, because we're going to uh, substitute this mass balance equation, in the accumulation term in the energy balance, I would like to leave it in terms of changing volume with time. Okay, so please bear in mind that under uh, conservation um, laws, we can write the volume in terms of area and height. Okay, is there an energy balance? Yes, definitely. We are heating up the system. There is an energy balance. Uh, also previously, uh, this energy balance was derived to be this term. Again, if you look at this um, energy balance, it is there is no temperature in it. And we want to control the temperature. We also want to control the, the volume as well. And so 
our aim now is to write this equation in terms of um, temperature and we will start off with um, the accumulation term. Okay, now please remember the assumptions that we made in the previous example. Okay, so we can now also assume that the internal energy is equal to the enthalpy. I mentioned that this is further explained in Appendix B in your textbook as to why this simplification has been done. And um, we can also say that um, the differential, um, as well as the differential change in time. Okay. Also, the enthalpy is equals to the mass times the enthalpy per unit time, per unit mass. That's the equation there that I've written in red over there. So you see rho v is your mass and um, the, the enthalpy with the copy is your enthalpy per unit mass. So that is very important because that's now what we're going to substitute back in here. Okay, to get the next term. And then now we assume that uh, the, we assumed earlier in our uh, assumptions that the density is constant. So we can take it out of the equation. There it is. Okay. We now need to further simplify this term using the chain rule. Uh, your mathematics, you just have to brush up on it. I know you're good at it. So this is how you um, uh, write the chain rule. You keep one term constant and differentiate one and then keep plus, then keep the other term constant and differentiate the other term. Okay. Once we've done that, we have, um, we can now further substitute. As you can see, we still don't have temperature as part of our accumulation term. So we just need to do um, more substitutions to the enthalpy. Remember that the change in enthalpy with time is C dt over dh. And so we will put that in there. Let's just substitute. This is what we're going to do. Substitute it there. And we remember also that the enthalpy is the heat capacity times the uh, difference in temperature. So we put it there. And then what's remaining now is your rho dv dt, which is basically your energy balance. This is the one. So we're going to put it, instead of that, we're going to put um, inlet flow minus outlet flow. OK. So now that we have done the substitution, this is, what, this is the equation that you're going to end up with. We have now successfully written our energy equation in terms of, sorry, our accumulation term in terms of uh, temperature. Okay, so we can move on. Um, remember the energy balance that we're working on is this one. So we're moving on to the right hand side. We want to write the change in enthalpy in terms of temperature. So the good thing here is that we've already done that in our previous example. As you can see, we ended up with this equation that is written in terms of temperature. So now we combine this and substitute back to the energy balance. Um, and this is our uh, equation that we're looking for. Okay, so obviously we need to simplify because now and make um, the change in temperature with time, the subject of the formula. So these are our desired um, model, models that we, we've been looking for. So setting up equations is very important. You will see that also in your project that you have to set up the equations uh, before you can do anything else in, in Python. Okay, so these are our desired equations. So we move on now to um, check the degrees of freedom. Oh, sorry. Okay. Here, um, I spoke about the conservation laws earlier. I did mention that you can write the volume in terms of the area and the height, which is preferable. Um, but uh, for this particular case, we didn't. Again, we go back to the degrees of freedom. I need your input again. Um, what are the parameters for this um, part? Remember that now the volume is no longer constant. Yes, definitely density and um, heat capacity. Let's just put it that in. And then what are the variables? Yes, definitely. 
true. Okay, not necessarily enthalpy, uh, Alex. But thank you for trying. So basically, yes, um, inlet temperature, that is true, Refiro. Uh, okay, so we have your temperature, output temperature, exit temperature, and your inlet temperature, and your uh, volume, um, your inlet flow, out flow and your rate of heat transfer to the system, Q. Okay, um, the number of equations, how many equations do we have? We have definitely have two. And uh, who has managed to calculate the degrees of freedom for us? Definitely six minus two, which is equals to four. What's our output variables? Definitely it is our temperature and volume. And then the input variables. To uh, Roland, I hope I pronounced your name right, Roland. Thank you very much. So uh, for for our input variables, we have the inlet temperature, and we have um, the inlet um, flow and the outlet flow, and um, the rate of heat transfer to the system. Okay. Again, now for control purposes, we need to classify the input variables as disturbance variables and manipulated variables. Again, please help me here. What are our disturbance variables? Um, I, Alex, I think you've mentioned manipulated variables. Um, and it, it's, it's no. Uh, definitely add in um, those um, inlet temperature and inlet flow. And then um, Alex has told us also our manipulated variable. I hope I'm right with this W. Okay, guys, um, do you see the pattern um, of uh, developing a dynamic model? I remember that uh, Paul mentioned that we don't have to follow the tables step by step, but um, uh, we'll, at the beginning, please do follow the table. And then when you are now comfortable, just make sure that you've covered everything in that table. Okay. Are there any questions about a heating system with a constant volume or a heating uh, system with a, a varied volume? Okay, thank you guys. Thank you very much. Um, over to you, Paul. They were very quick. I didn't think I'll finish this early. Fantastic. Uh, well done, uh, Um So I started that uh, variation of the example in the textbook on Friday. I didn't finish it. For some reason, my tablet doesn't want to start up, so I'm kind of dead in the water. Um, but I assume most of you would be able to do that one uh, since it is basically step by step done in the textbook. Do you have any questions regarding the uh, developing of the model and degrees of freedom related to the blending system? None. Okay. Um, yeah. So unfortunately, since I can't get my tablet going, uh, I can't finish that example. But there are a few things that we should probably discuss. Um, I did send a message on Slack, Tuts, uh, channel Tuts. If you received that, then great. If you didn't, join the Tut uh, 
channel, please. Uh, if you are concerned about the, your hand in mark that was changed from whatever value to zero, that is because you didn't follow the instructions. My instructions to uh, the bang TA that marked that was that any form of uh, deviation from the instructions got a zero. Uh, the reason for that being I'm going to be very strict on you following the instructions. Last semester I did have a student that failed the module because he did not follow one instruction, which was a very ex important one. Um, so one of those instructions would typically be do not use any form of electronic submissions if you are told not to do so, because if you do, then it's not marked. So this was basically just a, for you to learn a lesson that you must please follow the instructions absolutely to the T. Um, and you shouldn't worry too much about getting zero for this one. It will not count a hell of a lot of marks towards your semester mark. I will wait slightly less. But please do follow the instructions in future, even if it's a silly instruction like drawing a smiley face in the top right corner. Uh, you must follow those instructions. Then uh, you will uh, probably see that I'm going to change the groups slightly for the tutorial session for tomorrow. The groups will be subdivided into two, so each group will be subdivided into two more groups. Um, that is just for us to facilitate or to, to, to kind of engage more uh, directly with students so that the, the discussions don't get as big as quickly when uh, roughly 22 people are posting comments on the uh, tutorial discussion. So please note that I'll be inviting you or removing you from some groups and inviting you to different groups uh, so that the, the groups are formed in, in roughly 10, 11 per group. So please take note of that. Um, you should also, as uh, Temple posted, see that the tutorial questions for tomorrow has been uploaded. Please attend that. And we'll also probably discuss the project in a bit uh, during the touch session tomorrow. Anyone having any questions? Nothing. If none of you have questions, then I don't have anything to add today. Uh, Nomtembo, do you want to say something slow or can we call it the end of the session? I just wanted to check with you if you were seeing a, a complete screen on your side. Yes, uh, I did. Um, I okay. It's a little bit small, but um, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we'll chat about how we can go about uh, improving it um, um, in future. Because, oh, okay, because initially I had a full screen, but I wanted to see the comments, and then um, I decided to minimize it a bit. Yeah, I think uh, if any of the oh, students... Um, Topkota was used by menu options. Okay, I think I need to close that. Okay, thanks, Alex. Uh, if any of you uh, use a small uh, PC screen or something like that, just let us know whether you have difficulty in viewing it. Uh, obviously, you know, some of us, uh, so, so I've got large screens, I don't know, you know you're working on a laptop, perhaps you don't see it as well as I do, um, or any of the other students. Uh, so if you have a, an issue viewing the content that we display during lectures, please do let us know. We don't know about it if you don't tell us. So. Uh, okay. Feel free and, and to yes, post that Paul. on Slack. Hmm, oh, yes. yes. And, and Paul, uh, there's also that uh, on just below the hamburger um, uh, where it's showing you are sharing the application, um, the way it's showing that it's recording, there's this re uh, rectangle with a search button. When you click there, you can actually maximize your own screen. So um, for those that cannot see the screen, they can also maximize that. But because I need to see the comments, I cannot maximize too much. My hmm. computer is not as big. I'm, I'm only using one screen. Yeah, but I don't think there was any issue in, in viewing the content. Um, but if, if anyone had some problems, just let us know, please. Okay, thank you, Paul. 
I would like to thank Montembo. It was a very good lecture, I think. Uh, well done for your first time. I think the nerves always creep up on one, but it doesn't seem like you have any issues with this. So well done. Thank you, everyone. All right, then. Uh, thank you. We'll see you tomorrow morning.